I've been in love with my girlfriend for three years. She's been attentive and considerate to me, always putting me first. Everyone envies me for having a gentle, beautiful and perfect girlfriend, but I insist on breaking up with her. Even going so far as to spend a lot of money to find a breakup agency. The agency tailored a perfect lover for her based on my girlfriend's situation. My girlfriend, who used to love me to death, quickly fell into the arms of her new boyfriend. But later, when she was dumped, I begged her to make up like a madman. She became more considerate and gentle to me, obedient in every way, but only I knew that I had been reborn. In this life, my real revenge on her has just begun. The other party looked at the girlfriend's information. I handed over, a bit strange. Willow, a medical university lecturer, loved by students, annual salary 50k, height 168, weight 92, was once the school beauty of the medical university, stayed in school to teach after graduation. Why do you want to break up with such good conditions? A male student who seemed to be an assistant couldn't help but ask, because she's a devil. You won't understand what I've been through these three years. I was hysterical, wishing I could pour out all the grievances of the past three years. That the ringing of a phone call and the name displayed on it made me jump like a frightened bird. I hurriedly answered, indicating that I was already on my way and would be home in 20 minutes. After hanging up the phone, I looked at them again, insisting that they must help me. Money is not a problem, you can have as much money as you want, as long as you can make her break up with me, make her disappear from my life. After saying that, I didn't dare to delay any longer and hurried home, leaving behind the two people, especially the assistant, who was curious. What's wrong with him? Why did he leave so quickly? He didn't say why he wanted to break up. Makoto, the boss, was holding a tablet, which displayed all of Willa's information over the past 10 years. He's already told you why he wants to break up. As soon as I opened the door, I saw Willow leaning against the shoe cabinet. Her eyes were staring at me gloomily, like a night hunting owl. You're two minutes late. What were you doing? I suppressed my calmness, swallowed, and changed my shoes with my head down. I was delayed by attending a psychology lecture with Mr. Wan in the cemetery area. Liar. Willow exposed my lie, her eyes fixed on me. Having been with her for so long, I naturally knew that she wasn't sure whether what I said was true or not. She was waiting to see my reaction. She wanted to see flaws in my actions and expressions. She is a doctor. She can best find problems from behavior. And I am a psychological counseling teacher, naturally. I also know how to hide my emotions. However, after three years of being together, I, as a teacher, can provide psychological counseling to students, but my own walls have long been destroyed by Willow's punches and knives. Fortunately, my acting deceived Willow, and she didn't ask any more questions. Our conversation became normal. I got off work late today and didn't have time to cook. Let's order some takeout. I nodded, picked up my phone, and asked what she wanted to eat. The two of us order over $70 worth of takeout. While waiting, Willow helped me tidy up the clothes I had changed and prepared the foot bath water for me. Everything was calm and beautiful, seemingly covering up the turbulent waves under the surface of the water. Soon, the takeout arrived. I went to get the takeout first, out of politeness. I casually thanked the other party. Thank you for your hard work. After saying that, I closed the door. The next second, Willow, who had just been pouring foot bath water in the bathroom, suddenly appeared in front of me, her eyes staring at me gloomily. Do you know her? I shook my head. I don't know her. Then why did you smile at her? Why did you say she worked hard? She's shorter than me. Her eyes rolled up, revealing a large area of white. At this moment she's standing on tiptoe, her hands restraining my arms. George, didn't I tell you, I'm your everything. Why did you smile at someone else? Why do you think others are working hard? Don't I get tired, as soon as you come back? I wash your clothes and pour your foot bath water. Why don't you care about me a little bit? Do you know how tense and suspended I am every day in class facing so many students? I'm afraid that I'm not doing well in any aspect. I'm afraid of being complained by students. But what about you? What are you doing? You make me very angry. You might as well not eat today's meal. You reflect on it. With that, she took the food from my hand and threw it into the trash can. I won't eat either. I'll starve with you. George. I want you to remember, if I have a low blood sugar attack, it's all your fault. I looked at her and sighed deeply. The willow I knew before was not like this. 
I met Willow at a teacher-student fellowship meeting. In short, it's a small gathering of young single teachers organized by the school. During the idle chat, I noticed a teacher sitting at the end of the line, not playing with her phone or chatting, out of place with her surroundings. As a psychology teacher, I noticed something was wrong with her at a glance. I asked the person next to me who she was. Oh, she's Willow, a nursing teacher who just stayed at the school this year. Seeing me eager to move, the other person held me back. You're not interested in her, are you? I didn't nod or shake my head, because Willow did have a face I liked, but getting close to her was more because I felt the atmosphere around her was wrong, similar to many of the patients I've seen. So, I went over and asked if I could sit next to her. Willow agreed, but she deliberately kept her distance from me. I pretended not to see it and asked her why she didn't participate and instead acted like an outsider. Because no one would like me, I might as well sit here honestly. I found her thoughts very interesting. A beautiful female teacher who was able to study at the medical university and stay on as a teacher actually said that no one liked her. I don't believe it no matter what, but because of professional ethics, I didn't ask, but instead told her a story. I have a student who is very beautiful, but because she is so beautiful, it has caused her a lot of trouble. Willow indeed reacted when she heard this. She asked me who it was and what the trouble was. After all, the story was made up. I naturally didn't say, but found the right direction and continued. Since she was a child, she was bullied by her classmates because she was too beautiful and because her grades were too good. She became a ghostwriter for other students' homework. She told her teacher, she told her parents, but what she got in return was a sentence. How could anyone bully such a beautiful girl like you? Everyone thinks that beautiful people should be treated well, should be loved by the world. But who can accurately judge whether beauty is good or bad? Willow's eyes were already red. Perhaps it was the grievances of many years that could finally be poured out to someone. She told me her story. It was not much different from what I told. That her situation was worse. Her parents thought her beauty was a lottery ticket rewarded by heaven. They thought Willow was the stepping stone to change their class. They forced her to study. They forced her to dress up. They fantasized about the beautiful dream of becoming rich people in the future, completely ignoring Willow's fierce resistance and cries for help outside of the dream. Her classmates didn't like her. She was too beautiful. She was too perfect. She was isolated, bullied, and spat on by everyone on the opposite side. The teachers minimized the issue, saying that this was the price of beauty. Over time, Willow became a puppet. She ignored everyone around her and step by step walked towards the wooden statue where her parents had imprisoned her, where no sunlight and air could penetrate. They said that being a doctor could be liked by more people, and being a teacher was the first choice for high quality men. They said I was born to be chosen by men. I listened to her story. I felt very heartbroken. Beauty is innocent. It's not her fault. Maybe I was the first person to comfort her outside of her appearance. She looked at me. Her eyes changed. Afterwards, Willow often came to my clinic to talk to me after class. She brought me food and water, personally, in every possible way. My one look, one action, even saying something unpleasant. I lift my butt. She could always send the paper to me at the right time. I think I must have fallen in love with her. And I confirmed the relationship with her. But I later found out that what I thought was love was actually a subconsciousness that Willow had been trained by her parents since she was a child. She knew how to treat me well and how to hook my heart. All of this was just the course she had learned from childhood. The first time I proposed to break up with her was because a beautiful girl came to my clinic. She was suffering from depression and came to me for advice, but Willow ran into her. She insulted her verbally, said she was shameless, said that as a woman, she knew what the other party was thinking. Her words were intense. She scolded harshly, turning her past misery into bullets shot into other people's chests. I saw the female student running out crying. I rushed out to catch up with her, but Willow desperately dug her nails into my flesh. George, you said you would never leave me. Do you like her? In the struggle with her, I only heard a scream outside, ignoring the long blood red scratch that Willow had made on my arm. I ran to the scene. It turned out that the girl just now, stimulated by Willow, wanted to jump off the building. Fortunately, her clothes were hooked by the steel bars on the guardrail that hadn't been polished yet, and a life was safe. Afterwards, I apologized to the female student, but she didn't say anything and dropped out of school. I heard she went home for recuperation, 
I found Willow, hoping she could apologize to the girl too, but Willow refused. It's because she can't handle it mentally. I've suffered so much since I was a child and I never thought about dying. It's clearly her own problem. Why should I apologize to her? I found her unreasonable and finally saw the true face hidden behind the hormones. I proposed to break up with her. Willow cry, made a fuss, and threatened to hang herself, which almost got us both fired from the school. I had no choice but to continue to be with her. But because of the previous lesson, Willow forcibly moved in with me and forcibly forced us to meet our parents. I still remember when we parted with our parents. Willow hugged my arm and smiled terribly. George, you finally belong to me completely. Willow's surveillance of me became more and more perverted. She ordered me not to have any contact with any female as my girlfriend. Even if I expressed kindness to the same sex, she could still throw a tantrum. She said that her students were homosexual. I could not, I could not laugh, cry, get angry at anyone other than her. I was the god who saved her from the mire, but I could only become her god. For you, I defy my parents, now I only have you. Isn't love like this? I only have you, and you only have me. Our world only has each other. I was taken aback by her words. But I always thought that Willow was just sick. I could cure her. I was professional. But I was too naive. Willow didn't think she was sick at all. She thought I didn't love her enough. I didn't cut off social interactions and refuse all friends for her. Why should I please them when they don't like me? They all say I'm crazy. I'm perverted. What right do they have to let me approach them? George. I'm only good to you. I only care about you. Isn't that enough? Every minute and every second I was with her, I felt so suffocated. I no longer felt like myself. I could no longer provide psychological counseling to students. I felt like I was sick. I can't let Willow's views hit my defenses anymore. I proposed to break up with her again. This time, Willow stepped over the balcony with a seven-story building behind her. George, say it again. Believe it or not, I'll jump from here. I thought she wouldn't dare. But when I saw her let go and jump down, my heart was in my throat, as if I had already seen the days of the rest of my life spent on a sewing machine. But fortunately, the people on the fifth floor built a shed outside their balcony at their own expense, and my girlfriend fell on it and rolled around, just falling on their balcony. She didn't lose her life, but she had a lot of injuries because of this. My parents asked me not to stimulate Willow anymore, saying to endure it for a lifetime who made me provoke her in the first place. Willow's parents saw Willow's forehead scratch, and they also started to ignore her, feeling that the daughter they had carefully cultivated had no use value, and planned to raise a second child. And I was completely tied to Willow. But there is always a little hope in my heart. My life can't just be like this. It can't be ruined like this. Finally, I found an opportunity. By chance, I heard about a firm that can help couples break up. I found them. I hope they can help me get out. Willow kept talking. She sat on the sofa and wouldn't let me go back to my room to sleep. She wanted me to see with my own eyes her hypoglycemia occurrence to make me feel guilty. 11 o'clock at night, Willow finally couldn't hold on. She gasped in front of me, clutching her clothes at her chest and falling on the sofa. I was anxiously looking for glucose in the drawer, sugar in the kitchen, and anything that could help her relieve it. But there was nothing, in order to make me realize my mistake, she threatened with her own life and threw away everything. I was anxious and called for help. Soon, the sound of an ambulance siren rang downstairs, and two paramedics came upstairs. I was in a hurry to carry Willow on my back, but one of them stopped me. I looked up at him, somewhat surprised. It was him, the guy from the firm. He took Willow from me, held her in his arms, and told me to follow him. We got to the hospital. Makoto transformed and took care of Willow closely. He told me not to interfere with what he was going to do next, and if necessary, he would find me to cooperate with the plot. I nodded in agreement. I sat by the hospital bed, looking at Willow, who was gradually waking up. Thinking of the reminder Makoto gave me just now, I took a deep breath. Willow, why did you let another man hold you? Do you know? When you were unconscious, you were holding another man and wouldn't let go. You really disappointed me. I don't mind that your face is disfigured, but you actually broke our promise. You let another man touch you. After I finished speaking, I didn't care what Willow said or what her reaction was. I just walked out the door. And just as I stepped out of the ward door, Makoto exchanged a look with me and went in.
like completing some kind of handover ceremony. Then, under the arrangement of Makoto's assistant, I was taken into another room, where I could see in real time the specific scene of Makoto seducing my girlfriend step by step. I saw Makoto control Willow, who was just out of control because of my words, and comforted her softly. I'm sorry. Miss Willow, there's a reason for everything. I accidentally held you, when you fainted, I didn't expect your boyfriend to get angry about this. Willow didn't want to hear his explanation and all, and slapped him in the face. Why did you hold me? Why did you touch me? George is angry. What if he doesn't want me? Unexpectedly, Makoto suddenly held Willow's hand, looked at her sincerely and said earnestly, If he doesn't want you, I want you. I won't lie to you. I liked you from the first moment I saw you. The sudden confession left Willow stunned on the spot. She stared at Makoto, somewhat incredulous. My parents own a company with an annual income of about 8 million, and I also run several companies. Now I am a professor of medical science and a friend of the dean of this hospital. I think I have a destiny with you. I just came to this hospital yesterday and I happened to see you having an accident. Coincidentally, the hospital was short of people, so I met you when I helped out temporarily. Willow, I fell in love with you at first sight. I have to say, Makoto has a face that Willow really likes. Wearing glasses, scholarly, elegant, gentle, height, weight, Every aspect of his appearance hits Willow's heart. Willow didn't shake off Makoto's hand. I think, no matter who it is, when they meet someone better than their boyfriend, and that person is deeply in love with them, anyone would hesitate, seeing Willow take the bait. Makoto took the opportunity to give her a business card. Here is my contact information. I'll be waiting for your call. As he said this, Makoto also gave Willow a box of colored chocolates. His assistant also told me to hurry home and prepare for the opening of the next scene. When I got home, for the first time, Willow didn't harshly question me why I left her alone in the hospital. Instead, she looked at my reaction with a guilty look in her eyes, hiding a box of chocolates behind her. As for me, ignoring her little movements, I stared at her with wide eyes. The same words, the same piercing words. Willow, you really make me sick. I don't want to see you for a second. After saying that, I slammed the door and left, and Willow didn't catch up. She kept rubbing the business card Makoto gave her in her hand. She also took out the chocolate and ate a piece, finally staring at the words on the wrapping paper. Soon, Makoto sent me a message. It was a screenshot of Willow adding him as a friend. Caption. The fish is hoaked. Makoto generously found the most convenient eavesdropping position for his assistant and me. I saw Willow dressed up carefully asking Makoto why he liked her while smoothing the hair by her ears. Her words were flirtatious, shy and timid. Makoto was very gentle. When he heard Willow order an iced Americano, he considerately changed it to a hot one for her. You're on your period. You can't drink cold drinks. Willow was very surprised and asked him how he knew. Don't forget, I'm also a professor at the medical university. With one sentence, he completely closed the distance between them. The two of them had a great conversation, until they gave me instructions. Ask me to call Willow. I did as I was told. I asked Willow where she was. Willow looked at the man in front of her, who was gently helping her put sugar in her eyes to Americano and wiping the coffee stains from the rim of the cup with a napkin. For the first time after being with me, she lied. I'm in class at school. The assistant gave me a look. I grabbed my phone and rushed out. Without hesitation, I slapped Willow. It seemed that I was going to vent all the frustrations of the past three years. Willow was slapped and turned her face. She was about to say something but stopped when she saw me. Willow, you're really shameless. You ruined my life, but you're here hooking up with other men. Because of you. Because of your abnormal control. I have no friends, no family. Only you are by my side. I gave up everything for you. But what about you? What are you doing? You lied to me that you were in class, but you were drinking coffee with another man. The anger in my heart has been accumulating for too long. I have forgotten the scripted lines. I just wanted to take this opportunity to vent all the pent-up anger in my heart. Willow was in the wrong. And for the first time, I stood my ground in front of her. Willow, you've tried everything to keep me by your side. Suicide. Fasting. Jumping off buildings. What haven't you done? Even when my parents came to see me, you had to criticize them. You said that only you and I are family. You said that you gave up your own family and parents for me. Asked me to cut off relations with my parents. I did as you said. I listened to you in everything. 
But what are you doing now? You've ruined me. I have nothing left. And you're here looking for men. In my excitement, I wanted to say more, but I saw Makoto come over and hold Willow. And he deliberately bumped into me from behind to sober me up. At this point, because of my sudden intrusion and intense words, many people had gathered around to watch the excitement, trying to find the truth of the gossip from my words. I steadied my emotions and said, Once, I pulled you out of the smoke, you said I was a ray of light in your life, that I saved you. But what about you? You're afraid of the dark, you pulled me into the abyss by any means, I accompanied you to sink, but you left me. After saying that, I covered my face and cried, trying my best to portray myself as a victim. The onlookers were pointing and commenting, they were all criticizing Willow. Willow fears this kind of gaze, she fears being the center of public opinion. I once pulled her out, now I have to let her fall deep into it again. To get rid of her divine status, the voices of discussion were like invisible white threads wrapping around, forming a huge cocoon. I saw Willow's shoulders shaking violently, her breathing becoming rapid, it's me who pursued Miss Willow. She has nothing to do with it. Makoto stepped forward, covering Willow's ears with both hands. The nose was blocked out, and Willow looked up at Makoto, who seemed like a god descending, and a surge of love suddenly burst from her trembling eyes. I suddenly remembered what Makoto had told me. Willow is like a rootless duckweed, a bird without legs. She won't care who saves her, as long as she can be saved. She will hold on tightly. You think she can't live without you, but in fact, she can also choose. She can also choose the best. This is related to the subtle influence she has received since childhood. Now, I believe it. It's also time to exit, since you've fallen in love with another man. Let's break out. I was finally able to say this sentence again, and the answer was already agreed when Willow didn't catch up. When I went to the office to pay the final payment, the assistant told me that Makoto and Willow had already moved in together. Does your service also include sacrificing yourself? Or did Makoto really fall in love with Willow? The assistant shook her head. We're just ensuring your follow-up. From the assistant, I learn it. From the first day Makoto and Willow moved in together, he strictly forbade Willow to communicate with any man. Even when Willow's students called to discuss issues, Makoto would grab the phone and slam hard on the ground. Don't think I don't know about teacher-student love. Why don't students ask questions in class? Why do they have to ask now? Why does a teacher have a student's contact information? Don't think I don't know what you're thinking. Makoto treated Willow the way Willow had treated me. Even when Willow carpooled and sat with men, Makoto could find out. And when he got home he would either throw pillows or smash cups. Why do you have to ride in a car with a man? Why didn't you get out of the car when there was a man in it? Willow, you said that I'm the only one for you and you're the only one for me. So what are you doing now? Willow was scared. Half a month later, I suddenly received a call from Willow. George, can you save me? Please, I was wrong. I like you. I don't want to be with him anymore. I'm scared. I'm on edge every day. He doesn't love me at all. But soon, my phone was snatched away by the man next to me. Willow, why are you hiding from me? Why do you want your ex to save you? Do you think I can't find you if you change your phone number? Willow, you'll never get rid of me. You wait, I'm coming back to find you. After saying that, he gave me the phone, telling me that this way Willow wouldn't bother me anymore. Their mission was also over. I thanked him with a smile, and only after I watched him leave did I call back, Willow, by now, you should understand that I am the one who loves you the most. I'm someone who's already died once. In my previous life, I was quite and medley controlled by Willow, and was forced to jump off a building, when I woke up again, I was back to a month before I jumped, I didn't know what this time period meant to me, until I saw the message about the breakup agency on some platform, I was desperate to find them, eager to get away from Willow, but when I saw Willow sinking deeper and deeper as I expected, I changed my mind, just breaking up with me seemed too cheap for her, she ruined me, leaving me with nothing, and even called me a coward before I died. Not a single friend or family member mourned for me, and my parents had cut ties with me early on, fearing that they would be held responsible if anything happened to Willow, a person who bound me with her misery. It seemed that my punishment for her was merely to set her free. I'm not a kind person, I've already lost one life because of her. This time, I want her to deeply experience the pain of being isolated and skinned. Since Willow is so eager for redemption, then I'll let her dig her own grave. 
I want to turn her so-called redemption into a sharp knife and stab it back into her. Willow once again put all her focus on me dot dot but unlike the last time, having experienced loss twice, her desire is much stronger. She began to fear my departure. She no longer dared to question me when I went out, and when I greeted others, she would just lower her head as if she hadn't seen it. Even when someone sent me a message, she didn't dare to ask a single question, she could only pretend to be tidying up on the side, but her eyes were fixed on my phone screen. Of course, the messages were my unabashedly ambiguous texts. Finally, Willow became enraged and demanded to know who it was. But I was just waiting for her to speak, so I could frown at her, looking impatient. Willow, this is just a friend of mine. You don't even trust me in this. The one who betrayed us was not me. Do you think everyone is like you? If you keep going like this, I don't think we need to continue together. Sure enough, after my threats, Willow didn't dare to bring up those topics with me anymore. On the contrary, every time she replied to a message, I would mock her coldly, asking if it was another message from a colleague. Every time she went out, I would call her within 10 minutes to check on her, questioning if she was working overtime with some pretty boy again. Even though many times I knew she couldn't answer, so much so that later on, she would be scared and panicked whenever she heard a message or a phone ring. I treated her the way she used to treat me, but I was gentler than the original Makoto. Every time Willow couldn't take it anymore, I would sincerely apologize to her. I'm sorry. I just love you too much. I'm really afraid of losing you. I'm afraid you'll leave me. You once deceived me because of a man and left me. I'm scared. I'm really scared. Willow, you always say you love me. So why do you deceive me? The reason I've become like this is because you force me, isn't it? I'm sorry, Willow, but you should know by now that I love you the most in this world. After several times, Willow eventually chose to accept it and indulge in it. I watched her struggle daily in so-called love, yet not daring to object, and felt a strong satisfaction. Until in the end, when she didn't dare to speak even when she saw me deliberately letting her see me pulling and tugging with others, I knew my plan was almost successful. When I got home, Willow didn't dare to bring up the day's events and even put on a sexy dress she had never worn before. When she saw me coming back, she immediately pounced on me and hugged me. George, let's have a child. I wasn't surprised by Willow's idea. In fact, it was inevitable. She now has no excuse to bind me, even if we go back to being lovers. So she was very eager for intimacy with me, wanting to prove our lingering feelings in this matter. Moreover, under my continuous hints, she wasn't sure that I would definitely not leave her. Plus her lack of security, any little movement would become a huge wave in her eyes. She urgently needs something that can permanently bind me. That's a child, but I don't need it, and it's impossible for me to sleep with her. So I directly rejected her, but Willow broke down. She tore at her hair violently. Her expression shattered. Why? Why? What does that vixen have that I don't? Why won't you have a child with me? Don't you love me? She was screaming hysterically, as if that was the only way she could vent her dissatisfaction. Her originally exquisite makeup was now smudged by her tears, and the straps of her already skimpy dress were about to fall off. I trying my best to suppress my emotions so as not to laugh out loud. I originally majored in psychology and was restricted by Willow before. Now I have the initiative, it's easy to counteract, what's more, we both know very well now that this situation is all her own doing. So in her breakdown, I just smiled faintly, because I'm disgusted. In Willow's incredulous eyes, I continued to speak. Willow, do you know, when I saw you in this dress, my first reaction was not how beautiful and good looking you are, but wondering if you had played like this with that man, if you had worn this before. Can you guarantee that you've never done that kind of thing with him? Willow, what I want is a love that is pure from heart to body. I broke off relations with my parents for you, lost all my friends and family for you, but all I got was your betrayal. You betrayed our love, you don't deserve redemption. Every time you try to please me, I become more suspicious. So don't do this anymore. I won't have a child, you think about it. In the end, I added, now when I see you like this, I just feel disgusted after the last incident, Willow was hit hard and didn't go to school for three days in a row. The teachers at school speculated about the reason for Willow's absence. Some curious teachers couldn't help but come to ask me, why hasn't Willow been coming to class these days? I looked at the time on my phone, deleted the message reminder on the page, 
and shook my head at them. One of my colleagues quickly intervened. Oh, how can you ask George about this? They broke up a long time ago. Ah, previously, under my deliberate avoidance, not many people knew about Willow and I breaking up, but now, it's the best time to announce the breakup. So, under the surprised eyes of my colleagues, I slowly told them about the last time Willow and I broke up, without explaining the reason. My colleagues cast sympathetic glances at me, and even several people who knew the inside story didn't console me. They just congratulated me for finally getting rid of Willow. I just smiled, then didn't say anything. As a result, Willow found out about this that night. Her eyes were red, asking me why I didn't tell those people that we had reconciled. I turned to look at Willow, who was no longer as exquisite as before, and sneered. How would you explain the reason we broke up if they asked? Then, under her gaze, which was either shame or anger, I continued. After all, I can't afford to lose face. You can tell them yourself. Haven't you bathed these days? You stink. Willow looked at me for a long time, silent and not speaking, her eyes flashing with grievances. But so what? After all, I'm the only one who can love her now. And I'm the only one willing to continue loving her. So even if she's wronged, she doesn't dare to break up with me. When she came out after taking a bath, she was lightly dressed and had two glasses of red wine in her hand. There was no longer any grievance on her face, but rather a shyness and determination like a young girl. She said she wanted to have a good talk with me, but in the end, I just watched her fall asleep and sneer. As soon as we got back together, I filled this house with cameras, so I saw clearly when she drugged the wine. I naturally know what she's thinking. Since she wants a child so much, I'll naturally fulfill her. Half a month later, Willow was pregnant. By then she couldn't wait, so as soon as she got the report, she rushed into my office and announced it. So everyone's expressions looking at us became subtle. I looked at her carefully holding her yet to bulge belly, and the mockery I wanted to blurt out was swallowed back. Oh, what does it have to do with me? As soon as I said this, Willow's face immediately showed grievance, surprise, and disbelief. This is your child too. At this point, everyone's gaze turned to me. I stood up, with a face like I had eaten a fly. Willow. As far as I know we've been broken up for a long time, right? You say this is my child. Haven't we reconciled a long time ago? Then why did we break up? Do you want me to tell everyone the reason? That this child is yours, don't you remember? Half a month ago, we drank. George, this is really our baby. As long as we have him, you can never leave me again. Willow's eyes were flashing with a light called madness, and she pulled my hand to touch her belly. George, touch it. This is our child dot 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 double quotes. Women are inherently passive in love. And now that she's pregnant, those colleagues who don't know the truth start talking to her. Oh, couples argue, the head of the bed, and make up at the foot of the bed. You guys have a child now, stop arguing. Yeah. No matter what. Willow is carrying your child. You're being too heartless. You're not going to take responsibility, are you? George, you got Willow pregnant, and you don't want to take responsibility. Are you even a man? The last person to speak was a new teacher named Lynn. I heard that he was once Willow's student, and now he's looking at me with a bad expression. His hands clenched into fists, as if he's ready to rush out and vent his anger for his goddess at any time. I shook my hand off forcefully and looked at him with amusement. When did it become your turn to point fingers at Willow and my affairs? Or is the child in her belly yours that you're so worried? My tone was very bad. Even the teachers who were trying to mediate frowned. Oh right, maybe it really is. Upon hearing this, Lynn's expression became strange. But I ignored them and continued speaking. Willow, it was bad enough when you cheated on me. I wanted us to part on good terms and we had just gotten back together recently. But now, do you really want to hurt me in this way? In Willow's incredulous gaze, I slowly began. Willow, have you forgotten? Because you didn't want an unplanned pregnancy to affect your work, I had a vasectomy a year ago. Is this child really mine? Or did you go to someone else to help you conceive this our child in order to keep me from leaving you? Willow's child is definitely not mine. After she got drunk that night, I just took off her coat and left. She knew I wouldn't do those things with her. So she went out and got pregnant with someone else's child and directly asked me to give the child a name. She knew that even if I didn't want to, as long as she had this child, she could still trap me, but she miscalculated. I directly threw Willow's hotel records and the private detective's photos on the table. 
Or is it because you're too embarrassed to talk about your affair with Mr. Lin? When I was preparing for revenge, I knew that Willow would never let me go. So, after successfully breaking up, I started investigating her relentlessly. In my previous life, I died because of Willow. How could I let her continue to live as she did before in this life? Since I exposed the truth about Willow's pregnancy, we broke up again. The news spread across the campus, and many people even posted the story online. For a time, Willow's reputation was in shambles, and she and Lin were expelled from the school. Lin also began to pursue Willow, but what he didn't know was that Willow, who had experienced the previous incident, her twisted psychology began to only believe in my love for her. She saw me as the only light to save her from the darkness. So even if she had Lin's pursuit, she was also trying her best to ask me to get back together. Seeing that I ignored her, her methods became more and more radical, even to the point of stalking at night. And the last time, she scared a teacher who was on the same path as me. Until finally, she stood on the rooftop of the school, begging me to see her. When I went up through the layers of crowds, I saw her standing on the edge of the rooftop like a fragile doll. George, I've already aborted the baby, can we get back together? Hearing this, worrying appeared on my face, and I shouted loudly, Willow, come down quickly, we can talk about anything when you come down. But on the other hand, I was quietly sneering, Willow, you're so dirty, you're even dirtier than before, do you think I'll come back to you like this? You're wrong, everything can't go back, why do you have to treat me like this? You've hurt me, who loved you the most, so thoroughly. You'll never have someone who loves you like this again. Willow, just stay in that dark and disgusting swamp. Willow, you make me sick. You might as well die. Willow's expression collapsed. She squatted down and cried. George, I know I've wronged you. I don't want to go back to that dark place. I don't want to. I looked at Willow in front of me with cold eyes, pretending to be anxious on my face. Can you come down first? Can you come down first? But Willow just looked at me turned around and jumped down amidst the screams of the crowd. Willow is dead. I was taken away by the police who rushed over. The Willow jumped off the building under everyone's gaze, and there was surveillance to testify, so I just easily made a wrecker. It wasn't until I walked out of the police station and the sunlight spilled on me that I felt I was truly reborn. There would be no more control from Willow in the future, and there would be no more Willow. After Willow's body was cremated, Willow's parents didn't want to take care of her affairs. After receiving the ashes, they threw them directly into the river next to them. Willow no longer exists in this world. After her death, the chat records and videos of her control over me were exposed, causing another storm on the internet. It's a pity she can't see it. In this matter, I am considered a victim. To compensate me, the school even gave me a month's holiday. I took advantage of the holiday to travel and truly felt the beauty of being alive. From then on, my life no longer had any perverted control and possession. What I have is just a bright future.